One word, hypocrites. I usually agree with a lot of the things that Abba and Preach says. You know, they typically have a stance that makes sense. Usually it's very nuanced. Usually what they're saying shows that they've looked into a topic and actually are well aware of what they're speaking on. However, it's just something about this election is just putting everybody in a freaking daze. They're just, they're just flip-flopping on different topics that they seem to have had a particular stance on up until this point, but then now that it's something else, they somehow feel differently. Essentially, this video is them reacting to a little, well, not really reacting to the interview with Donald Trump on the Joe Rogan podcast, but more so commenting on the fact that these politicians are going to these podcasts to talk to the people. You guys are going to hear some hardcore hypocrisy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm about to show his ass. He's about to show that he is very ignorant in a lot of, in a lot of ways, okay? Maybe not all the ways, but in a lot of ways. Because Justin and I, we both watched the entire three-hour interview with Joe Rogan and Trump and Donald Trump. Very good interview. <laughs> when I tell you I learned so much, not just, you know, about his personality as Abba is going to suggest, but also about his stance on policy and why he has those stances. So when I tell you either Abba didn't really watch the interview, he just kind of had it playing in the background and then just heard some stuff and then was like, oh, or he's being disingenuous. Okay. It's either one of the two. And I'm hoping it's the first one that you were just lackadaisically listening to this interview. And then you heard something that was like, wait, what is this? where this is coming from, but was too stupid to just rewind to see the context of the conversation. But enough of me yapping. Let's go ahead and get into the video. All right. Next topic. All right. We're rolling. Good to see Let's you. Go. There we go. <laughs> Madam Vice President, welcome to Call Her Daddy. Yeah, but your thing is going really great. My son's a big fan of yours, Baron. Madam Vice President, Roll glad Martin. to have you here. Ready to bring the funk? And I'm trying. <laughs> Bro, that is so cringe. <laughs> Ready to bring the funk? Uh, nigga, is this 1970? Like, what the hell are we talking about here? Roland is just so weird. <laughs> this is a very weird, odd man to me. <laughs> we are sitting down with uh, Mr. President. Woo! Mr. President, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, I remember when I got on YouTube and I was very excited uh, over the last like eight or nine years when I started hearing about independent media, comedians, podcasters, news people, letting their own individual platforms. Yeah to essentially be free from the chains of advertisement. As soon as they started paying people on YouTube to spread their ideas and things like that, you were no longer under a situation where advertisers didn't matter. And he should know better because they literally just got on Fresh and Fit and Sneeko about how their content makes advertisers afraid. This whole time you're telling me that you, you know, oh, you know, I was so happy about this where you didn't have to worry about advertisers, but you realize like ever since they started monitoring Advertising, you've had to worry about advertisers. This isn't new. And when a lot of these podcasts actually started popping off, that was already the case. But you had to be careful about the words you choose and the things you say, okay? And this is something that they seem to be aware of when it comes to Sneeko and Fresh and Fit. Yeah, and as a result of being free from the chains of advertisement, they would be able to save the vast majority of what they wanted or be as unfiltered as possible, right? Yeah. Yes. I am now convinced that comedians and podcasters are just political tools. As if you guys don't make videos about politics. Anytime you ever discuss politics, you're gonna be like a tool for politics, whether you like it or not. Everybody else. I no longer think there's that same separation between mainstream media and independent media like I used to. And I don't think that's true for all of them, but a good majority of a them. Majority. And let me give you an example. We always talked about how, oh, we do these platforms so we can say whatever we want. And now with this election cycle, everyone is being careful about what they say during interviews, be it Trump, be it Kamala, I'll call her daddy or whatever. And they're doing what essentially is like puff pieces, right? Having these people on, giving them soft questions, never checking them on the record, never fact checking none of it, just letting them yap about whatever they want. And the reason they're doing this is not because that's who they are. The reason they're doing this is because they would lose access to this interview. You guys spent all this time whining about mainstream media being so fake because of advertisers, but y'all doing the same thing so you don't lose access to these powerful people. It's not entirely the same. When you have a situation where someone is going live with you, 
There's no teleprompters. And you're literally sitting there for three hours. No edits. That's going to give you a more authentic point of view of where that person is coming from. Because they don't have all these other things that they can hide behind. Apparently, there was this one really egregious moment where I guess Kamala had answered a question so poorly. So they copy and pasted a different section of the interview into that spot. There is still a difference. The, the, the podcast where they film it and then they go make edits and then they upload it. Okay, you're dealing with a similar beast. That whole Joe Rogan thing is completely outside of this. With that interview, you were able to gauge a lot about Trump. So honestly, like with him incorporating, especially using Joe Rogan's face as the as the face of this, even though they're, you know, making little footnotes about call her daddy and all this other shit. They're essentially saying like Joe Rogan is the main one doing this. And they're putting most of the heat on him, even though his interview wasn't a softball puff piece. Like, I'm sure you guys are used to people arguing and going back and forth and having a rude dynamic when it comes to talking to people. But they had an actual conversation where you got to learn a lot about Trump and his policies and why he has those policies. But we'll get to that in a little bit. To these influential people, how is that any different? Yeah, you know, in the context of watching Kamala Harris do the Call Her Daddy podcast, watching Trump do Rogan or, or Flagrant or Theo Vaughn stuff. And, you know, just watching all these different things. I don't think these types of interviews are bad in a vacuum. What I don't like is that now politicians are able to just jump around, do a bunch of interviews where they're asked softball questions and only do those Excuse me. types of interviews. Why is it that re world-renowned journalists are not the ones who are having as much access to these people, right? it, you, even if they're independent, okay? Why are they not getting access but someone like Rogan is. Because they have no credibility. When they do have access to them, they give them multiple choice questions with multiple choice answers. So they have no credibility with the average American. Most people don't watch the news. I have not watched the news in so, so long. The only time I've ever like sat down and watched any kind of news media are literally clips online. <laughs> They've lost credibility because they're the ones who do the soft puff pieces. All these different politicians, what they'll do is they'll go to the people that they know already agree with them and want them to be elected. And then they get asked a bunch of BS. We've seen that throughout this entire election, throughout previous elections as well. When it comes to that topic, yeah, podcasters and things like that, they're going to have more credibility because they're not completely in the pocket, right? You might say, oh, well, they might not touch on these different. Well, that's the same thing with any interview. I'm sure if Beyonce were to do an interview right now, granted, she's not a politician, but it's the same point. There are going to be certain questions that her her people are going to let them know don't you even think about asking? That's not new. And that's something that's been throughout media in general. You're complaining about a problem on one end while uplifting the people who created the problem. The problem started with these notable or reputable news or journalists. Like, let's be serious. Journalism has been dead ever since Watergate, okay? They put an end to that shit. And so what we have now is a biased storytelling of events. That's what really is happening. I'm not going to be looking to these so-called reputable people to tell me the truth because they're all in the pocket of somebody else. And yeah, you could say that like these podcasters, they have their own biases and things like that. Of course they do. We're human. Every human does. I'm not going to hold these podcasters to a higher standard than you're holding the, the general media. What I do find is that especially with the Joe Rogan podcast, he did give pushback to different things he was saying. He did reroute him back to the question when he kind of was doing his weave. <laughs> if you hear, if you watch the interview, you know what I'm talking about. When he's doing his little weave, he did have to bring him back, reel him back in a few times. Even with that interview, he asked really good questions. If you actually watched it and if you actually listened, right? Listen to understand and not just listen to be outraged. And the reason being, I know. Trump knows he's going to go Rogan and it's going to go well for him because he just really has to sell his personality. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to go well for him just because it's Rogan. Like you guys are going to literally play a clip of him saying that he doesn't like Trump, right? He's not a Trumper. He's not a MAGA person. So it's not that it's just necessarily going to go well for him. It's not Trump's fault that he's charismatic and knows how to talk to people, that he has good social skills. <laughs> like, are we now using having good social skills against folks? It's not Trump's fault that Kamala can't string a, a coherent sentence together to save her goddamn life. That's not anybody's fault but Kamala's and her handlers. To say that, oh, well, all he has to do is just show he has a great personality, that's not true. Because Joe asked him questions about policy and about different things that if 
he didn't have a coherent answer, if he didn't have a logical reason for why he feels the way he feels on these different topics, it was going to make Trump look stupid. Okay. And people are already looking at him through a hateful eye because of propaganda media. It's not that he just is just this easy interview. He sat there for three hours, three hours and had this long conversation where they touched on so many different topics. You know, I, I think that these statements right here are just, they don't apply. <laughs> they don't apply. And it's, it's not true. Even though there's questions about his record, even though there's questions about his flip-flopping on certain things, those never are going to come up. No. So he knows he can go on here and do really well for himself and come out great. And I know this is true because Rogan said so himself. And um, by the way, I'm not a Trump supporter in any way, shape or form. I've had the opportunity to have him on my show more than once. I've said no every time. I don't want to help him. I'm not interested in helping the, him. The, the, the night is still young. We'll see. If I have him on, the night yeah. is still young? Yeah. You think no, I'll have him on? I think you'll have him on. Really? Yeah. Why do you think that? Because you'll have Putin on? <laughs> 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 and I think you, you had... Um, like people, people like Kanye on, for example, and yeah. you had a great conversation with them. Uh, yeah, but Kanye is an artist. Like, but Kanye doing well or not doing well doesn't change the course of our country. Yeah, but you don't. Do you really bear the responsibility of the course of our country based on a conversation? I think you can revitalize and rehabilitate someone's image in a way that is pretty shocking. Look at the way people look at Alex Jones now, because Alex Jones has been on my podcast a few times. And so that's fair that he feels this way. And it's also fair for him to change his mind. He might have changed his mind in this in this situation to the point where, you know what, I do want to have these people on my podcast. And not only that, he wanted Kamala to come on as well, because her image is trash too. <laughs> that might be the reason why he was okay with it because both of these candidates have trash images as much as the media wants to pretend like the sun shines out of Kamala's ass most people don't like her okay let's just keep it a buck most people are not rocking with Willie Brown's maybe his stance changed because both candidates have a trash public image and it's not like you're gonna just fix one and then not fix the other she had the opportunity to come on and have a conversation and instead she ran to Shay Shay Club where we know for a fact it's gonna be softball all over the place probably edits all over the place who knows and I don't think that's a fair statement to use against him because like I said he has the right to change his mind and the situation is a bit different I hear comics say all the time like oh why are people acting like we're influencing the election why are people acting like we have all this influence and we're changing things. Even Lex Friedman said that. And I'm like, well, why do you think these politicians want to go on these platforms? Do you not make commentary on political events and political figures on your channel? So you yourself don't see yourself as influencing politics, even though your ass is in Canada? Don't sit here and point the finger when you do the same thing. You bring up politics too. And? If it's not influential, it has no merit, merit why do they want to get on there? Because why, why, is, why are so many of the public demanding and asking for this thing to happen? Why is it that brands come to you and pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars to advertise your product for one minute if you have no influence over your audience? Why is it that audiences will shell out thousands of dollars for meet and greets, but you have no influence over it? When people say this, do they think just because they're kikiing and laughing on this thing, they have no influence? No. When people spend hours of their day at, like on a regular basis watching you, they build an attachment. They start trusting you. They take your opinions indifferently. They start to actually grab your opinions and repeat them in real life. And that's true. Okay. I will, I will call things out that are true as well. People are influenced by the folks that they watch. Anyone saying that oh, well, me telling jokes or me doing this, this and that and the third in the realm of politics isn't influential is, is a lie. That's not true. You have a tremendous amount of influence and Joe's no different. Now, if Joe just had a change of heart and he says, I think it's worth it because Trump is the right candidate and I want it, that's fine. But anyone who's pretending like these things are just jokes and we're just here to talk, no. You guys are also here to serve as a political platform for these people during an election season. There's a reason why people are saying, whoa, Trump went on Rogan. He's definitely going to win now. Why? Because they're recognizing the effect. But at the same time, 
I have these people trying to convince me it's just jokes, bro. We're just <laughs> talking. If you're watching the Joe Rogan interview, it was a conversation. It wasn't a situation where it was like, I give you a question, you answer it, and I come back with another question. No, it was a flowing conversation, which I think is a better format for getting to know a candidate and what they actually believe in, right? Because if you just have them give you these little snippets of, well, this is my policy on this, and this is, you never really get to the root of why they have that policy in the first place. You never get to the root of how they arrived at these decisions at all. You don't get to really know these candidates. And if we're going to elect them to be the leader of the free world, which <laughs> they're trying to take away some of that free, but I digress. I need to know who the hell you are. <laughs> like, who are you? Who are these people running the government? Who are you? So I appreciated the format of having a conversation because it wasn't a typical standard interview. So yes, him saying, I just want to have a conversation is valid in this instance because yes, he asked questions, but it was in a more natural, fluid manner. It wasn't, okay, I have five questions. Question number one, what say you? It's not the same. <laughs> like you can't relate the two. <coughs> that's not it's, true. It's, it's not, it, that's not. It's true. not true. You're not in a comedy club roasting Trump while he's there. That's not what's happening. You guys are having a substantial conversation where you're changing the perception people have. And if you go read those comments, you'll be like, yo, I didn't know Trump was like this. I didn't know what's her name was like this. I really liked her this. It made me closer. And whether you like it or not, most people, when they vote, they don't really vote on policies nearly as much as people would like. A lot of them just vote on based off how the person makes them feel, how likable they are. So... Yeah, these thing. things have a huge influence. What's wrong with me getting to know who the person is? Like, what's the what's wrong with that, right? Because if I know that in your interviews you seem very shady and like you like to lie and dance around questions and all this other stuff, then yeah, I should be able to not trust you and not want you in that position because I feel like your character is shady. It, it's still reasonable. Yes, we need to know their policies. Absolutely. We also need to know who the f they are. Because they could very well be lying about those policies and doing a bait and switch. And if you see them talk at length, you might be able to read between the lines and pick out what type of person they are. If they are a person of their word or not. We are the new media. The podcast, the commentary, the all that, that's the new media. Mm. It is. So whenever you go, politician basically wants to be likable. It's a popularity contest. So if that politician goes on the podcast just to talk while they're in an election, they seem more likable. It ain't even about the views. It ain't I got nothing to do about the views or whatever at some point. It's just how you like them better. So, of course, the image changes because you look at a politician that looks, a politician looks like a robot. The, what, 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 is, what is being said about politicians? Yes. Uh, they're puppet, puppets. They're robots. There's just, you know, they're not your main. They're just, and when you see a politician for once, just taking the script off, just having a normal conversation, you're like, God damn, I, I really didn't. That's what you, you're changing your views on that politician because he looks more humane. And that's the game. Yes, I'm going to go on TV and all the, all the, all, all the journalistic outlets to talk about my curriculum and all the things that I have and the questions that I have about the what I want to do running and stuff. But when I go onto a podcast, when I go, you're looking at the humane side. And I think that's what gets to people. And what's wrong with looking at these people as humans? They are. Someone's personality can tell you a lot about how they're going to behave in office. If you're a shady individual and I can peep that during your long form conversations that uh, uh, something's off with this motherfucker, like something's off, then yeah, that's going to change how I feel about you because you can have all the best policies in the world. But if you shady, then I know you're going to do a bait and switch. Then I know it's just smoke and mirrors. It's not real. You're just saying these things to get me to vote for you. And then when it's time to pay up, Annie up, you're going to act like you deaf, dumb and blind. OK, like you don't see me sitting here like, where's all that stuff you promised during your campaign? I think that it is, should be balanced. We should be able to talk about the policies, but then I also want to know who the hell are you? Yep. People are disengaged from politicians because they really don't look humane. You ask them a question, they can't answer the question straightforward. They always have a script and stuff. They always have something or like a, a way to achieve the question. Now, when you go on these, when they go on these platform, you look at the human side. You don't even think about whatever they had to their curriculum. You don't even think about all of that anymore. You see, oh, wow, 
Yes. That person is a likable human. And, and and you guys are more trusted than the average news anchor, than the a- average independent journalist. Especially when we're talking about Trump, because his image has been assassinated since 2016. Okay, let's be serious. They've been talking crazy on this man for a very long time. So if anyone should deserve an opportunity to clean their image up, especially when their image has been tainted by literal lies, it it would be Trump, (laughs) okay? Especially after they call this man Hitler, they say he's a threat to democracy, even though uh, Kamala got no votes, but somehow she's the the candidate. They literally skirted the primary system to just install her as the candidate. She's not the president. She doesn't get that incumbency privilege to be the candidate. So they want to talk about disrupting and the threat to democracy. That in and of itself is a threat to democracy because you took the choice from the democratic people. Even if they want to say, oh, I would have voted for her anyways, it doesn't matter because you're not reflective of every single Democrat in the country. Every single one of them deserved the right to vote on this topic. And they did not, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. They just selected her, appointed her as the candidate. Who made that decision? The elites. (laughs) Okay, the elites made that decision. Your average ass did not get a choice. If you're a Democrat, because you're the ones who can vote in the primaries. As much as they've talked so crazy on this man's name, I don't feel bad with him being able to get in front of people and show people who he really is. And Kamala, you know, her image is in the trash too. She had every opportunity to go and clean that shit up by going on these podcasts as well. She just she just failed miserably because there's something wrong with that woman. Uh, Even yeah. though those people are going to be generally more equipped to get to the bottom of whether or not this person's record's any good, whether or not this person performs under pressure, Instead, we're now hearing about fucking whale depression and whatever the fuck it is. It's like this is the part where I know for a fact he did not really watch that interview, because if you watch the interview with Joe Rogan and Trump, the reason why they were talking about the whales and and them washing up on shore, because that's what's happening when you have these large windmills, the vibrations drive the whales crazy. And so now they're washing up on shore more often. And the reason why they were talking about windmills was because they were talking about environmental issues. They were talking about policies that are affected by environmentalists. So they bring up the topic of windmills because, you know, the environmentalists, oh, we need to put windmills places, windmills. Trump brought up how they kill the birds, which is true. They're freaking eyesores and they require a lot of upkeep. And a lot of times they don't actually get upkept, if that's the right term. So you end up with these graveyards of windmills that are rusted out unusable and nobody's doing anything about it. But when we're talking about policy, when it comes to environmentalist issues and energy, which is a serious policy issue, them talking about how these windmills are first of all, not effective, but then also they're affecting the whales. They're driving them nuts. It's just, it all fits together. So they weren't just talking about, oh, whales are just depressed. It's just some random topic. No, that was a tangent related to energy policies. That was a tangent related to how some of these environmentalists are corrupt as hell. And they mislead people into thinking that windmills are this great thing that's going to solve energy and we don't have to use gas anymore. But here are the ramifications of windmills. Some things that people wouldn't know. They wouldn't know that these these windmills are causing these whales to come upon land and die. They wouldn't know that birds are being killed in mass by these windmills or that they oftentimes get rusted out and then abandoned. That lets me know Abba didn't really listen to the interview because if you listen to the interview, you got to see his foreign policy and why he had the foreign policy that he did. You got to see why he was like, you know, railing against the environmentalists and all that other stuff. You got to see all these different things that relate to policy and not just get a two minute scripted answer. So that just lets me know you aren't listening, my nigga. You are not listening. You are probably sitting there editing your video with those bullshit edits where I know you guys have seen them where the screen will just go black for like 10 seconds and then it'll come back and then it's just a hot mess. You were sitting there editing videos and you was letting it play in the background, not really thinking about it. And then you heard whales and you're like, what? It's either that or you're being intellectually dishonest. Okay. It's one or the other. And I hope that you were just sitting there typing and you were just too dumb to rewind and figure out the context around them talking about whales. So I'm gonna need you to actually listen before you start making stupid comments like this. And see, you're influencing people too. You're influencing people by saying this dumbass comment and it's not even accurate to what the video was. So you yourself are being misleading with your content. So you have no reason to be all clutching your pearls when you're literally doing that right now. Because anyone who actually watched the interview 
interview would understand and actually listen to understand where he was coming from would know that the topic of whales related to environment policies, energy policies, which is very important to a lot of people, especially since the reason why we have such high prices is because of energy policies. Abba showed his ass here. <laughs> he showed his ass and it is dusty. Okay, it is dusty. He needs some lotion and a wet wipe. And watching Kamala on, on Call Her Daddy, he's like, what are these questions? It doesn't matter what you intended. What is the actual effect of what you're doing? If folks want to do this thing and have these conversations with these politicians, fine. But you have to hold their feet to the fire to some degree, okay? And Joe Rogan did. If you actually watched the podcast, he gave him pushback. He made sure he explained things. Like I said, Donald Trump, he likes to do the weave, okay? He likes to do the weave. He had to reel him back in like, no, we need to get back to the, to the question. Let's get back to the question. He did hold his feet to the fire. It's just, he wasn't rude. <laughs> like, is that the problem? Joe Rogan wasn't rude enough? Is, is that it? <laughs> and if you're not going to, then we need to at least ensure that they're going to have other opportunities to have their feet held to the fire. Fire. But when it's just a bunch of puff pieces, when most of the landscape is just three hours of I'm just going to talk rather than three hours of I'm going to answer to what my record is, why I voted on this bill at this time that disadvantaged these people, why I voted for this when I said I was going to do that. We don't get three hours of that. We never will. Why? Because what gets more votes nowadays is just sitting there and talking about how I feel about X, Y, and Z. But also, I'm not um, well versed enough to politically to know... Yeah all of the corruption that's been alleged and to understand what the the whole Russia gate stuff what what's real like if you really want to do that correctly it's something that I would have to research for a long time and to really really sp and I don't have that kind of time I don't disagree with Joe Rogan in, in that sense right and I feel like them using these clips is very malicious because I don't know when that clip was but it could have very well been within enough time frame for him to educate himself on these things. Because I could say, yeah, I don't have enough time to do this. But then in retrospect, I make time for it. Because Joe seemed pretty well versed on the different things he was asking, asking Trump about. You know, they're maliciously using these clips of him because first of all, I don't know when this clip was, but between then and now, clearly he had time to do some kind of investigating and some kind of research. And that is well within his right. And it is well within his right to change his mind. I think I've been having this reckoning lately, but more and more, I feel reassured now that I'm seeing Tony Hinchcliffe go to Madison Square Garden during the Trump rally and do his fucking set. And people are like, Latino, no, listen, Puerto Ricans everywhere are losing their mind, which <coughs> understandable. right before understandable. a vote is crazy. And if you guys see him in the comment, this is it. A lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay, understandably. All right. And the, the, the part that's so annoying about this is that people don't understand context. Now he's going to say, oh, well, in the, in the set, he never cleared this up, this, that, and the third. But do you know what's going on in Puerto Rico? They literally have trash washing up on their shores daily. The hurricane did major damage to them. Yeah, what he's saying, it might not make you feel good. I'm pretty sure he's not actually talking about the people being trash, but it's more so a reference to literally what's happening in Puerto Rico right now, which I'm pretty sure Puerto Ricans don't want trash on their beaches, okay? I'm pretty sure they don't want to clean up the trash that's just washing up on their shores. So it's it's a, it's a, context, it's a contextual joke. And this is not out of context. I listened to the full thing. There is no context that really makes this joke better or whatever it is. And people are running around saying, well, he's a comedian. It's just a joke. You're another political tool. You're at a political rally, okay? And you're not doing a regular set. You're doing a set. And if you guys go watch the whole thing, I watch the whole thing. All of the jokes perfectly aligned with MAGA values. There was no jokes aimed at Republicans. There was no jokes really aimed at Trump to like mock him. No, they were all like anti-immigrant, pro-Israel, anti-Palestinian, anti-California, pro-Texas. Jokes are just jokes. Apparently. Not y'all saying this after saying all of this. People are going to get offended no matter what. It has nothing to do with who, whatever, whatnot. Okay? If you don't align with what they're saying, people are going to get mad. Whenever I hear this stuff where it's like, only black folks can make jokes about black folks, white folks can make jokes about white folks, and oh. women can only make jokes about women, and men can make jokes about Really? Women can't make fun of men? Really? You sure you want to go down that road? Because a lot of women's ads are about to get destroyed. Listen, if we're being honest. We make fun of each other. We make fun of ourselves. If you want to do self -depre the, you know, deprecating humor all the time and make fun of your own community, all this, that's fine. Do you? But then again, that's bullshit. But this whole thing, like, you can't make fun of other groups. Why? Why not? And also, to what degree do we want to do this? Should poor people only be able to make fun of poor people? Rich people, rich people? No. Poor Americans, people Americans? Poor people can make fun of rich people because they're punching up. 
Is he on that layer? <laughs> if you're on the bottom layer, it's perfectly acceptable for you to punch everyone upwards. If you want to punch against oppression, it's acceptable. But oppression cannot punch against the oppressed. Yeah. I'm not a fan of, of, of the whole punch up, punch down no. stuff. You know what I mean? If you want to go and make fun of children, make fun of children. If children want to make fun of you, make fun of you. I don't people, I, I, I dislike it when people gatekeep. Who can make jokes about who? Okay, so when you make commentary on trans issues, which is a political topic, whether you like it or not, you're a political tool. I'm gonna need y'all to apologize to, to this person, okay? I'm gonna need you to apologize because clearly y'all feel the same way. If, if you're gonna say that it's okay to tell jokes, then I'm gonna need you to hold that same energy across the board. He was at a political rally with MAGA people. He's gonna make MAGA jokes. I don't see any issue with it. And if the people there felt that they didn't like his jokes, by all means, they had every right to boo him right then and there. You're entitled to not like his jokes, but he has every right to tell them. You want to do a joke and say you're on Team Girl, I got no problem. If you want to make a joke and say you want on Team KKK, you all got no problem. Go ahead. Make it funny. That's all. See, hey man, I'm not going to say nobody can not do anything. Do it. And even if it's unfunny, you know what I'm going to say? That was pretty, that, that sucked. But just because this stuff is things that you would deem unacceptable doesn't mean people can't joke about it. Here's something that the late, great Patrice O'Neill said. What we are fighting for is not necessarily a joke itself, but the attempt. Okay? Right? Because good jokes and bad jokes, come funny from, jokes and unfunny jokes, they all come from the same place. In your brain. All right? So people place. have to separate what's funny, what's not from what's right. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether it's funny or not. Are they trying? If they are, then cool. You can hate it. You can say it's racist. You can say it's transphobic. I don't care. But don't say it's harmful. So I might not like what you have to say, but I'm going to defend your right to say it. And I genuinely feel that way, even when it's a joke that I personally do not find funny. For instance, you know, uh, what's his name in his Hennessy trees? That thing was so stupid and unfunny to me, but he has every right to tell that joke if he wanted to. And I thought you guys understood this point based on previous things you've said, but clearly it is only an issue when certain people are doing it, then you have a problem. But when it's other topics or when it's you, making jokes about like trans and all this other stuff, which like I said, you guys are free to make whatever the hell jokes you want. And if he has the right to make jokes about whoever the hell he wants, if he wants to make jokes about Puerto Ricans, if he wants to make jokes about immigrants, by all means, he can. Because like you said, you don't have to be a part of that community to make jokes. That's what y'all said. But at the same time, your whole set perfectly aligns with the ideal humor of a Trump fan. Which, which is fine. And what's the problem? But don't, don't, yeah. Don't what? Don't make it pass. Like, mm, I don't need it. Stop. Just, just, just. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't do that. No, no. Oh, yeah. No, what? You didn't say anything. <laughs> you, is this some inside commentary that I'm just not privy to? No, what? Clearly, he's at a rally for Trump. I'm pretty sure we all know that that's some form of an endorsement if you're at his rally speaking, even if you're telling jokes. Duh. If you watch the whole Tony Hinks clip set, if you listen to it towards the end, he just starts repeating Trump slogans. Let's close it out and uh, let's make speech free again, make America healthy again. God bless New York. God bless America. Let's make it great again. I love you. Thank you. Welcome. And what's wrong with that? And one of the things I appreciate about like Dave Chappelle is that He'll have an entire set that literally is so fucking funny, but then he'll also tie in some real shit. Like he'll also tie in some things that are very thought provoking. Now, I don't think what what dude said was that very thought provoking, but to say that his whole his whole speech has to be comedy, the entire thing has to be comedy. What are we actually asking for? And is it stupid? It, he could very well end it with God bless America all he wants. That like, what's the problem? What's the problem here? Please explain. Hmm. Not in that joking sense. He just repeats them. And, you know, you go to a concert where you expect the artist to sing and sometimes they talk. Sometimes they get up there and they say stuff. It, it, it might not be what you expected. What's the problem with it? So I'm like, how is your set made for jokes? But at the end of it, you're just doing a political advertisement. It's because you can start with one thing and have other elements in it. Like one thing that I really love about Futurama is that they'll have episodes where obviously it's funny, but then they take a real serious turn, right? They take a real serious turn. And then for instance, that dog episode, I tell you for the longest, I could not watch that episode without crying. The little dog episode where he waiting outside the pizzeria for Fry and Fry has no show up. I'm like, oh my God, somebody come grab this dog and give him a loving home. When I tell you like this, this whole idea that they're trying to come together and make it an issue, makes no sense. In different areas, we see that something can start one way and end a completely different way. 
you can balance by putting together two different things and having it be what it is. I mean, even another another example would be uh, the Spike Lee movie about the Black Klansmen. You had this hilarious movie right at the beginning, and then at the end, it ended with it ended with clips of like news stories and all sorts of stuff. People blend things together all the time. I don't understand what the problem is. Is it really just jokes? Nah. What is independent media really? Yeah, just like the Spike Lee mute. <laughs> just like the Spike Lee movie was a comedy, but then it ended with something more serious. Do they not realize that that's a thing? Independent media was my, the idea was that you were going to be free from, free from all this influence. Which not. Are they not just dependent on it? Yeah. When they're cutting what they want to say just to be able to have access to people? You're just Okay, look, you're always going to be beholden to somebody when you're on somebody else's platform. I thought you guys knew this. You guys make fun of Sneeko and Fresh and Fit for losing their losing their ability to monetize because of stupid things that they said to scare away advertisers. But now we're just, we're shocked at the thought of it. <laughs> like, no, you've always had to watch your words. If you said something completely out of pocket, Abba, your shit would be demonetized just the same. We all have to watch our words. Unless you want to just put everything that you have on a website that, you know, is run by you, completely ran by you, owned by you, all of that, by all means. But you're on YouTube, my nigga. You're on YouTube. You're beholden to the YouTube policies and you always have been. So to have this weird idea that that was at one point not a thing is just stupid. And it just goes to show that you have an issue with it when it's things you don't like, but then you don't have an issue with it when it's things you do like. Wait, uh, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. Same thing, but just same, same, but diff, diff. And, and, and this is the thing, nobody can have all these kinds of mainstream guests on consistently and have their moniker of independence, of noticing comics being very buddy-buddy with every right-wing personality on the planet and softballing all the interviews and softballing all the interactions. What is the point of being given the right to joke about anything when powerful people come by and you don't joke anymore? Doesn't that strike you as a bit cowardly? No. You're, so you're, you, It doesn't? No. Okay, go for it. Just because of the list of things that they're going to tell you not to talk about. Like, there's the list of the PR list and stuff like that. So if you want to carry your interview, you have the choice. You either don't have an interview at all and you spend all this time with the connects and everything to have the interview or just go with the flow of that interview. But essentially, what you're getting at is some compromise may be acceptable because it's leading to this outcome. What I'm saying is the compromise that they're making, they're only making it in front of powerful people. What is the point of demanding free speech? What is the point of demanding the right to be able to joke about everything if it's only going to be used and waved against weaker people? If it's only going to be used against people who really can't harm you? Then th that's the part that makes me look like, what the fuck are we doing? Stop. <laughs> Just stop it. As much as people joke about Trump and make fun of him and call him orange man and all this other stuff, as much as the media and people on YouTube, podcasters, all this stuff, as much as everyone beats down on this dude, you can't say that there aren't outlets for this. There's people talking mad stuff about Kamala, right? There's people talking bad stuff about Kamala on the internet too, me included, because I don't like her. But, you know, to, to act like these things are not happening just because it's not happening right directly in their face. If I were to have the opportunity to speak to a Kamala, someone I don't like, that doesn't mean I'm going to take that opportunity to just crash out. It doesn't mean I'm going to take that opportunity to crash out. I would do something similar to what Joe Rogan did, right? We're going to talk and I'm going to let you talk as much as possible to see if you even know what the hell you're talking about. It doesn't have to be this thing where I'm, you know, if I'm a comedian and I'm talking to somebody that's in political realm, that I have to be sitting there making jokes at their face. Like, why are we wanting people to be rude to folks? <laughs> Is that what we're really asking for? For people to just like, oh, I'm in your face, so I'm going to just tell all these rude jokes and stuff like that. Not necessarily what should happen, I don't think. And yes, I do think that hard questions need to be asked, but they don't have to be asked in such a rude manner. And we've seen this happen with The Breakfast Club, right? They'll have on people like Jill Stein, they'll have on people like Laura Trump, and they will talk to them all kinds of crazy as hell. And guess what? The comment section ain't having it. It makes the, it makes the interviewer look stupid. What you're asking for doesn't really make sense with what is appropriate for how you talk to people 
And also, it's not necessarily going to lead to the outcome that you're thinking it will lead to. These comedians, they have every right to talk to these people with a respectful tone and not be an ass in their face. And it's very well within the politician's right to not want to go visit somebody that's going to talk crazy to their face, right? Like if I were Trump, I would not go on Breakfast Club. I would not because the same way, the way they treat Kamala is not going to be the same way they treat Trump. They would talk crazy to that man and disrespect him at the door. I'm not going to walk into a place just to be disrespected. If you're going to ask me real questions, if we're going to have an honest conversation, by all means. It's to be able to joke against trans people. Is that what mm -hmm. we, we got this shit yeah. for? I mean, I mean, just like the jokes that you guys tell about trans people and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure those checks cleared of you joking about trans people and their situation. And I was just so excited because at the advent of independent media, it really looked like such a cool time. Watching people talk about psychedelics, talk about relationships in an unfiltered manner, talk about men's issues and not have to worry about. It. You always had to worry, Abba. Stop. You always had to worry about advertisers. Stop it. It was never a situation where you could just say whatever the hell you want and it would be fine. You always were beholden to those guidelines and policies that are in the fine print when you sign up to be a partner on YouTube or a partner on Twitch or a partner on whatever the hell. It's never been a situation where you could just say whatever you want. And you should know that. I felt it was so refreshing to be able to hear topics I would never hear on television or mainstream media. That's what I loved about independent media. But now when I'm looking at it, it's just like, oh, OK, this thing has gotten so big that independent media is just media now. Mm. There is no independence. You are dependent. You're dependent on Spotify for your shit. You're dependent on your Patreon subs. You're dependent on the guests that you need to interview. You're dependent on the advertisements on YouTube, which you have been ever since they've been monetized. You're the big name people. There is no independence. Honestly, I'm 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 not even certain if I can feel like there's that much of a difference now between mainstream media and these media type personalities. Well, when they say when they say that it's not this independent, they're really talking about it's unorthodox. Yeah, yeah. it's not, the, but it really is. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just we're doing the same thing. Yeah, but then 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 in a different matter. But it's really just the same thing at the end of the day. The end result is the same thing. You yeah. still have bosses. That you have to go by, you still have to review your advertisement through something. You still, it's the same thing. And hey, you want to hear the fucked up part? The bosses for independent media aren't necessarily bosses. Sometimes it's the guests, sometimes yeah. it's the audience. Sometimes. Because you go to the comment uh, section yeah. and the audience is not happy with what you're doing, so you start changing the tone of what you say or the kind of people you interview or your. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the question to you guys. And what I, is what I'm saying wrong? Yes, most of your videos I agree with. Most of them. But this one, yeah, you're wrong. Your head is completely up your own ass. And you're pretending like this is something new that just, oh my God, we, we used to be able to, do, no, you never did. Okay. As soon as there were advertisements on YouTube, you never had the opportunity to just speak freely. You always had to be careful of your words and risk demonetization, period. You guys feel like independent media is independent in the way that they present it. And I'd be left. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And you, also, another thing I'll say, this is probably my last point. All this talk about independence, but do you not notice that the whole vast majority of that independent sphere, everybody gets their cues from Rogan? But I just think this is an interesting topic. I would love to hear what you guys think about independent media, about these kinds of things that are happening now. Are comedians and podcasters just be, you know, new types of political tools? We'd love to, to hear you. But in my experience, I feel like everyone's very partisan. And honestly, it's, it's mainstream media with some more swearing and some edgier topics. There are instances where it truly is independent media, right? Where you're able to get information that you normally would not be able to get access to if it were up to the mainstream media, okay? For instance, when the hurricanes happened and all that flooding happened in North Carolina, they were lying to us and saying that certain things were happening when they really weren't. And it was because of, and, and once you start posting anything, even if you don't have a big podcast, right? Anytime you're posting online for the public to see, you are in fact becoming a part of media, that new wave of media, whether you want to classify yourself as that or not. So when you have all these people that are in North Carolina, actually at the grassroots trying to help people and they're telling you, hey, FEMA is blocking us. You're not going to get that information from the mainstream. So it's not necessarily the same. Now, when it comes to being respectful to guests and things like that, yeah, there are some similarities. When it comes to certain things you're able to say and not say, yeah, there are some similarities. But the big difference is 
we can actually find out information from regular schmegular people on the ground. We're able to get information from the motherfucker that's actually living through the shit and not just the media painting a picture for you based on whatever biases or whoever's writing their checks. So there is a big difference. And I very much so appreciate this new wave of media. And that's the reason why they want to be able to control disinformation and misinformation, because they want to be able to tell you that the person living through it is lying and lock them up or find them, even though what they're showing is accurate. They want to be able to control the, the, the access to truth because you can show me a video of all these problems happening and then the media is telling you it's not happening. You, somebody got some explaining to do. There is a huge difference and I still do appreciate this new wave of media because anybody can be media. If people are wondering what's happening in Atlanta, Georgia, I can literally go to Atlanta, Georgia and show you because I, I live close to there. I don't live exactly there, but I live close to there. You know, honestly, this whole video is very, uh, is very off base. Um, does that mean I'm going to unsubscribe, rage unsubscribe? No, I like their channel. Their videos are usually pretty good and their takes are usually pretty non, not, not nonsense, <laughs> nuanced. That's what I meant to say. Their takes are usually pretty nuanced. This one, I just feel like they have their biases like everybody else. Clearly this bias is leaning more heavily towards people inviting Trump onto their platforms, even though they gave little footnotes about call her daddy. But who's who's on the thumbnail? It's not Kamala. <laughs> Kamala's not on the thumbnail. It's Trump, Joe Rogan, and then ABBA making his faces. So, you know, this was a very biased video. I, like, I don't expect them to say everything I agree with. It is what it is. But I'm not going to sit here and not call out the hypocrisy in what they're saying. If you like this content, you already know what to do. Like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe so that you can become a Febe. And I will see y'all with the next one. Deuces. That was so ugly. Let me try that again. Deuces. Deuces.